Hi guys, welcome to the Totally Magic channel here at YouTube. Glad you can join us. Got a great trick for you today. But before we do that, if you haven't already done so, please consider hitting the subscribe button and also that little bell next to it. That way you'll be notified every time we upload a new video, which is about once a week at the moment. We're going to do a trick that appeared recently on Pen and Teller Fool Us, and it was by a guy called Paul Gertner. And he did a great card trick along with guitar picks, which you may have seen. I'm going to perform a variation to that trick, but I do believe that it works very much the same. But I'll let you decide at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's get straight into this routine. A place that I love to visit is Vegas because I love the gambling the casinos, the playing cards, the slot machines and all those wonderful symbols that win you money. Well I've got the deck of cards. I haven't got the slot machine but I do have these. Some little tablets and on these are pictures that you would often find on a slot machine. We have a picture of a, an orange, we have the melon, there's a lemon, a cherry, and a plum. And I'm going to get you to choose one of those symbols. Now, I'm going to get two people to help me. Uh, you, sir, are going to choose a symbol and a playing card. And you, sir, you're going to choose a number in just a moment. Now, I do want you to pick one of these symbols, but without seeing it. We're going to just remove the cards and we'll come to those in a moment because we'll use the box to hold these little symbols so you can see in the box I'm going to drop these in there what do we got the the melon we got the orange we got the lemon the plum and this one the what is it the cherry we'll shake them up and what I'd like you to do, I don't know if you can see this, let me just open that up for you. Uh, they're in there and I'd like you just to put your finger in and pull out any one of those symbols. So any one gets pulled out, just one, okay, and turn it face up so we can see it. And there we've got the cherry and that's an absolute free choice. So that's your first selection. Now I did say that we're using a deck of cards and let me just show you the cards. They are just a regular pack of 52 cards. We'll give them a quick mix up before we start. And I want you to choose a card by running your symbol along all of the cards and stopping when you get the urge. So they'll pick up their symbol, they'll run this down all the cards and stop anywhere. Now when they stop, let me just separate the cards at that point because I want you to see the card that you stopped at. There it is there. Just show you could have had any of these. I want you to look at that but do not show me. Okay, so I'm going to look away. I show the camera. There it is there. So they will look at this so I don't get to see this. I then ask them, can you write on the back of your symbol the name of your card but do not let me see it and again I'll look away so they will then write down whatever card they chose from the pack and they could have picked any card in the deck what we'll do is we'll lose it so we'll just cut the cards to lose it and I'll even give it a quick shuffle I then turn to the second spectator and say I'd like you to think of a, a random number 1 to 52. Why? Because we've got 52 cards. So give me a number between 1 and 52 now. And they get a free choice and you might say, I don't know, 18. I will ask you, do you want to change your mind before you commit yourself to that number? You want to stick with 18. I want you to write it on that card. I'm going to turn around so that I don't glimpse what was written before. Now I'll turn around and they will write whatever number 
they're thinking of. Now what I do is so that I don't actually catch a glimpse of that, in my pocket I've got an envelope which I want you just to put that in so that I don't get to see what's written on the underside of that. We come to you again, you chose a number 18. I'm going to shuffle the cards and I want you just to call stop whenever you want. Stop there. Now do you want me to put these on top or underneath? It's up to you. Underneath? Yeah. Would you like me to cut the cards? You're happy with it there. You chose number 18. Now we're going to spread the cards across the deck because I am going to count to your number 18. Now watch closely. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Will you agree that that is the 18th card in the pack? Let's just remove these. The 18th card. Let's just recap. Remember, you chose a symbol from here and we can see those you chose the cherry but it was a free choice you also chose a card i couldn't know what that card is it was from the pack here that was shuffled let's tip out exactly what was chosen the cherry and for the first time, let me see, you've got 9S, which I guess is a 9 of spades. Yeah. You chose number 18. It was a free choice. This is the 18th card from a shuffled pack. And there is the 9 of spades. Now that's a great trick, but I want to show you an even better trick. This envelope that's, that we've used, I made a prediction earlier, not just one or two, but three. You see, I wrote earlier on here, you pick the cherry, nine of spades, and the number is 18. And that is a much better trick. I hope you enjoyed that variation on the great trick by Paul Gertner with the guitar picks. I changed it slightly, but I'm pretty sure that the method was the same. And I'm going to show you that right now, how it was done. Now, one thing I have changed is the way the deck is used. And I'll explain that in just a moment. OK, but let's have a look at the trick itself. As for the pen, well, actually, during the summary, Penn did give the secret away. He mentioned the word index. And what he was talking about is an index of pens. And Paul probably had 52 pens about his person, and he would pull out the correct one with the correct number. Because I didn't want to invest in 52 pens and have them written on, I went for the envelope part. That way it was a lot cheaper. And all I did was write on here, it's the number that changes. Uh, what happens if you had said 17 or 21, then in my pocket, I have the others in here. I've got all of the envelopes here with all the different numbers on. Well, so that's how I did the final prediction there instead of the pen. Let's look at all the other stuff. The symbols. Now instead of guitar picks I just cut out some little pictures that I printed out of the symbols that you find on a slot machine. But you could use ESP symbols or even numbers. The box. Just like pen revealed it was forced. So I did force the, the cherry onto them and the way I did that is inside the card box 
is a little flap. All I did, if I pull that out, is just a piece of cardboard that fits nice and snug in here. And what I've got in here are the other symbols, all matching cherry. So what I do is I put this in the box. In the back part, I will put all the cherries. Close that up, put the pack of cards in, you're ready to perform. I then pulled out the cards. I can quite freely show this, if you squeeze the box, it looks empty, you can see it all clean. I then picked up the symbols, putting them in one at a time. You'll notice that I put the cherry in last of all, because the reason I put this in, as soon as I put the last one of these in, what I do with my finger here, I don't know if the camera can see it, can you see, I just move the flap across. There it is there. I move the flap across and I drop this one in here. Don't forget the audience are looking at the front. There it is there. I drop this in and then I push my finger all the way in and then squeeze the sides and that way you can see the symbols in there but they're all the cherries. So when the spectator puts their finger in there, slides any one of them out, he's going to get the cherry. You can close this, put it to one side, you're done. You've now forced that on. So that's that part of it. What about the cards? Well, I used the Svengali deck. Now I know for a fact that Paul didn't use a Svengali, but I'm not gonna tell you what he used. I do know, but um, if you're a real magician, you would know as well. And if you don't, I will do my impression of pen and give you a few clues about the type of cards he used, or what I believe he used. I might be wrong, but I believe he used this special deck. Let me tell you a little story. On my way here tonight, my car didn't start. So I tried to get a cab, I couldn't get a cab. I had to get a bus here today. Um, there wasn't any single decker buses, so I had to get a double decker bus. So I took the double decker bus to here today but the roads were very bumpy one minute it was a smooth ride the next minute it was rough uh, and this happened all the way here rough and smooth I was glad when we arrived and I got off dust myself down and um, I almost felt I had risen like a phoenix and that should give you enough clues as to the type of deck that Paul used However, I actually prefer using the Svengali. Now, what I've got here is a reverse Svengali so that I can spread the cards and they all look different. I can drop them like this. I can even shuffle the cards. But I know that every other card is the Nine of Spades. Now, what I did is when I spread the cards and they run this across. I had no idea which card he was going to land on. So as he stops, I separate the card. You'll notice I didn't just pick this up. I needed to know for sure that that was the nine of spades. So what I did is I gathered these up and I turned this packet over. Now you can see I've got a nine of spades and that's the card I will let them have. I will say, there you are, you stopped at the nine of spades. I don't need to show him that. Where he stopped is where I split, and there it is there. But what if he had stopped on this card here? Then again, when I spread these, when I turn this over, because I don't see a nine there, I know the nine is here. So I can then push that off on there. OK, work out how you're going to do this. You might have a better method than me, but either way, you want them to pick the nine. You don't have to do the cards across like this. I guess you could get them to cut it or some other method. I gather the cards up. They look at the card. They wrote it down. We lose it back in the pack. I then shuffled the cards and asked the other spectator to give a, a number. They wrote that down. Now at that point, that's when I gave them the envelope to put it in. We shuffled the cards, they stopped. Now remember, this particular pack 
is what we call a Svengali, which means that every odd card, number one is the nine of spades, number three is the nine of spades, number five is the nine of spades. So all the odd positions are the nine of spades. Now, because, now if Pen had given me a odd number like 17, I would just spread the pack this way and then count one, two, three, four, five, because a not card will be the nine of spades. And we pull that out. But what if it had given me an even number like 18 or 22? I would then spread it this way and start counting from the bottom. That way, all of the false cards, the nine of spades, will be in an even position. So it just depends on whether you spread it from left to right or right to left. They're always going to end up on the chosen card. And that's really it. That's how I like to perform it. Uh, some people often say, aren't you giving away the secret? Well, as I said, they're on a TV show called Fool Us. Someone did say, well, it's only for Penn and Teller to guess. No, I don't think so. I think the audience at home can guess as well. Uh, and also, what a lot of you don't realise, if you look at the comments below the Penn and Teller video on YouTube, the secret's already been revealed. Loads of people guessed how Paul did the trick, and it's in the comments. Just have a read of the comments. You don't have to watch this video. Anyway, for those of you that watched it, I hope you enjoyed the routine and maybe you can take a couple of ideas and use them in your own tricks as well. Until next time, practice and enjoy.